I'm Steve Halleck, and boy do I have some exciting stuff going on for you guys in this coming year. This is probably my last podcast of 2018, and uh, as you can see, I'm really trying to up my production value here. So this is, I'm going to put a lot of effort into especially my YouTube channel for 2019 and in the next couple weeks you'll see a couple things starting I'm still learning I'm still getting my way through all of this uh, you know video editing lighting camera setups stuff like that uh, but bear with me and I think it's all going to be worth it uh, today we're gonna start out pretty simply I asked people to submit questions to me on Instagram and I'm just gonna tackle a couple of these questions in a Q&A format. So today I picked two that are in the realm of like how to think about watches, how to choose pieces, like uh, what's better than something else or how to refine your taste, right? So let's dig into these. The first one here is this one guy asks, why spend 85 grand on a time-only Kari V instead of less on a double split in platinum? Interesting question. Um, you know, we all think about value for money. That's obviously something that you want to think about and refine your tastes and kind of uh, the biggest question in there, we all know money, you know, obviously 85 grand is more than 75 grand or whatever, but what we all don't really know is value. So value is something that we have to learn as we go along in watches. And I think this question falls into a problem that you see a lot uh, created by basically the internet and how we're consuming watches now. Um, if you think about it, most people are spending much more time looking at watches on the internet, looking at watches on Instagram, you know, on a screen, and maybe reading about the specs of watches compared to watches they actually own, they're actually wearing, they actually spend time with. And uh, you can sort of lose the forest through the trees as the saying goes and i think this uh this question is a bit of an example of that because to anyone who's actually had a kari or a double split uh or both especially you know that these are just two totally different watches um the double split is an extremely complicated watch from a uh established brand owned by richemont um ka the kari is a tiny handmade piece um, by a, a single creator um, and it's simple and it has a focus on chronometry and not you know a, a double split second chronograph right so this really goes back to like what you're interested in so what is value right value is different to different people if your idea of value is getting the most complex uh, most difficult to make mechanics, then maybe the double split is a really good choice. I happen to think they're a really great value for money uh, where they are in the current market now. And, uh, you know, there's no denying that that movement is beautiful for the kind of mechanical sculpture that it is. And a uh, split second complication is one of the most difficult to achieve, and especially a double split second. Um, is you know split second split minute is uh, even that much more and Langa is known for their chronographs and it's got the pedigree it's got everything right so if that's the kind of watch that you're interested in and you like the aesthetics and you like the size and whatever then this is good for for you right but somebody else might be interested in handmade uh, supporting a living artisan um, beautiful attention to extreme detail um, uh, and all these things and this is what you get with Akari not to mention the fact that we're talking totally different sizes of watch different looks you know of course depending on how you spec out your Kari but I assume this is the he uh, this guy's talking about the one that I have in stock right now which is red gold with a custom uh, dial and custom movement and everything like that you can find it on my site uh, in probably in sold products by the time a lot of you guys are watching this but uh, anyway 
you've got to know what it is that you want. These are both great watches, but they're different watches for different people, um, or maybe for the same person. But in that case, the answer is to, to own both, right? Um, so this idea that one is just, uh, you know, why not just buy the double split because it's the same money or less money and you're getting a double split second chronograph, whereas the other is only time only. Uh, you're really missing a lot of the point and the joy in watchmaking. Um, I don't think anybody who owns both of these watches would uh, agree that, you know, one carries a lot more value than the other, real value, right? Um, okay, good. So that's that one. The next one is kind of gets to a little bit of the same idea. And this is who has better finishing, Jorn or Grubel? Interesting question. Uh, again, I think in this kind of a question, you really have to look at, well, I mean, the answer is, is a no brainer. It's Grubel. It's not even close. It, it, it's not even in the same ballpark, but nor is it supposed to be, right? So this is another one of those like missing the forest through the trees thing because Jorn is totally not interested in finishing. Um, in fact, if you look at the early uh, tourbillons, resonances, these pieces, they're extremely rudimentary, uh, rudimentarily, is that the word? Finished for uh, this level of watchmaking. Uh, Mr. Jorn's idea has always been about the mechanisms, about the aesthetics, and this is what interests him. So if you like a Jorn, or if, uh, or if you like that idea, you may like a Jorn, but this is what you're going for. It's this watchmaker who had this idea of interesting mechanisms and interesting presentations that he wanted to give. But this is not a guy who's focused on finishing at all. And anybody who thinks that his name should be mentioned with Grubel in a, in a question about finishing has just totally missed the point here. Um, Grubel, they're the best finished watches on the planet. There's nothing that compares. I see it all. You can bring up any guy that you want and they're not gonna touch it, right? Even the little guys, even the Dufour, even Kari, these guys, they don't touch Grubel. This is the tip, 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 top. But again, this isn't necessarily, you know, great. You do pay a price for this level of finishing and you do still have the uh, aesthetics and the mechanics and you have to be interested just because, uh, you know, for all of these other reasons, you're not going to buy the watch just because of the finishing. You have to actually like the watch. So the fact that a Grubel is finished a million times better than a Jorn doesn't necessarily make every Grubel better than every Jorn, right? These are not the only metrics of what makes a good watch. So you really need to get out of this laser focus that can happen on the internet, on your phone, on whatever, where every detail is magnified and you start like zoning in on one specific thing, the finishing quality, the brand name, the level of complication, the, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. You need to step back a little bit and start looking at these watches as a whole. What do they represent? What does it look like? Does it look good? You know, is it a good design? Are the mechanics interesting? Is it well made? Is it well finished? Uh, is it purporting to be something that it isn't, right? Like it would be a big problem if Francois Paul Jorn was talking about how great his finishing is, but then his finishing was terrible. But I would guess that you, you can almost never find him talking about finishing because he really doesn't care about finishing. Um, so you really have to look at what these are, what they represent, and what makes each watch individually good. And this is the whole reason why it makes sense that there are lots of different brands and lots of different models and lots of different watches because each one presents something different. And I think the, the real standard that we need to look at is how does this watch live up to what it purports to be, right? If the value trying to be gotten out of this watch is the level of finishing, then it better damn well be finished well. Um, if it's supposed to look beautiful, it better look beautiful. 
If it's supposed to be complicated, well, this better be a complication that makes sense and that we care about and that uh, you know is executed well, right? Um, or if it's combinations of these, then we want these elements combined really well, obviously. And I think all the watches that we're talking about in this episode, be it a double split, a Kari Voodalainen, any Jorn, uh, any Grubel, I think almost all of them are very good watches, right? But they're good for lots of different reasons. And this is the interesting part of good watches. You know, we can throw away all the crap watches. There's tons and tons and tons of crap. And get rid of all of those. Now you're left with this smaller subset of good watches. And within there, we have to be able to know what it is that we value or what it is that we are looking for in a piece. And then how does it live up to that? So if you want the best finishing in the world, go to Grubel. If you want an incredibly complicated uh, kind of uh, iconic watch at a really good value in the current market, then a double split might be your thing. If you're looking for totally handmade by an independent creator who's at the very top of his game, maybe a Kari Von Nuit is what you're looking for. And uh, if you want a, an historically important, classic, modern, independent watch, you know, maybe an original Jean Tourbillon, despite its rudimentary finish, uh, is the one for you. So this is my biggest thing. I mean, I harp on this over and over again, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but this is what makes a watch collection. If you're trying to build an important watch collection, if you're trying to get into, especially in the indie realm, where you really need to follow your own path, these are the types of questions that you need to ask yourself. This is how to evaluate this sort of thing. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. I hope this makes some sense. It was nice chatting watches here on this uh, It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Los Angeles. I think this will probably come out on Monday morning. But um, thanks for your Instagram questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to more of them. I'm going to do more of these if you like these sorts of Q&A type of things. It helps me think about you know, what's going on in other people's minds rather than just be inside my crazy little mind here. And uh, anyway, I'll see you guys later.